Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're here for another ESL India Premiership matchup. This one is between Feral Rage and 2K Overlords, the tournament organized by Nordman Gaming, sponsored by HyperX. I'm CloudX. With me, I've got Vivek once again joining me. It's been a while, Vivek. How's it going? I'm doing extremely well, Nishant, and I'm really excited to see some Indian Dota. It's always fun to watch. Very unpredictable. More than anything, teams like to go with heroes they're familiar with and uh, it's going to be interesting to see what uh, 2K Overlords manages to accomplish in this game. Yes, well, our 2K Overlords drafting according to the meta right now, at least a little bit according to the meta. They've opted to ban out the Slaughter and the Life Sailor, getting themselves the Invoker and the Vengeful Spirit. Feral Rage eliminating that Void and the Timber Saw, very meta bans coming out from them as well, but... The Ancient Apparition pick, a little confusing to me. Possibly just a deterrent for a possible Alchemist pickup from 2K Overlords. I mean, uh, I, I, uh, this might be a bit presumptuous, but Indian teams do like to go for an all AoE draft. And with that Ancient Apparition pick, I do smell a bit of uh, all-round AoE. Another thing that's quite interesting about Indian drafting is more than drafting for the meta. I've seen Indian teams basically draft like it's a rank AP match where you just ban heroes that you hate playing with playing against like Slark and uh, Tim, I mean Timbersaw is always a band, uh, those kind of bands. So I, I'm interested to see if this, this is just like whimsical banning and picking or there is an actual uh, strategy behind all the drafting going on right now. Yeah, I, ideally in the lower rungs of Indian Dota, that's pretty much how it is. I mean, most teams are just looking for experience. They sign up for these tournaments, which is great, by the way. There's, I think there's like 190 or 200 teams signed up for the Dota 2 leg of this tournament itself, which is absurd. But most oh. of these teams, they're not, they're not signing up to actually win. They know that they, they've got a really slim chance when there's teams like First Departure and Invisible Wings running in the competition. But uh, they're just doing this for the experience or to have fun. And, uh, we see the Dead Prophet ban. Uh, 2K Overlords not wanting Invoker to have too hard of a time in the mid lane. And uh, I, I wonder if you're going to see a pattern here of mid heroes being banned out by the 2K Overlords. Yeah, well, I mean, I wouldn't blame the them. Lane. Yeah. Invoker is pretty nasty at the middle lane. No matter how many nerves Ice Frog slaps him with, that Ford Spirit is still a real pain to deal with. But, uh, you know, Feral Rage, they've got themselves that Kunkka, which I would hope is in the support capacity. As a support Kunkka, a gank on yeah. the middle lane isn't really uh, too difficult to execute. So I'd expect Feral Rage to be making some rotations towards mid. Yes, and uh, speaking of uh, banning heroes that are a nuisance to Invoker, at the middle lane, the Alchemist gets banned out. And uh, it, that seems to be the overall strategy for the 2K Overlords. Secure Invoker is mid lane. Uh, Feral Rage banning out the Spectre and the Sven. So pretty much uh, ranked all pick bans coming out over here. At least in my 3K bracket, this is what I see a lot. <laughs> well, the Alchemist ban, I think there's a little more behind it than just the mid lane security. So Feral Rage has okay. the only real counter at the moment to the Alchemist, or the hard counter with the Ancient Apparition and the Ice Plus. The other counter was banned Correct. out by by uh, 2K Overlords themselves. They removed the Slaughter, which is basically the best way to break through the Alchemist's low armor. If uh, Feral Rage got themselves the Alchemist here, I, f I believe 2K Overlords would have re very little ways to actually deal with them. So I think it's a fairly smart ban coming out from them. Mm -hmm. Also, the Timber Saw was banned out by Feral Rage. Timber does... Really well in the mid lane, I'd like to say, against Alchemist. Reactive armor, whirling death. Really helpful. Timber, Helps you stay in that lane. Timber's like the OD man of 6.88. <laughs> or the Dead Prophet. I mean, there was one patch where we saw a lot of Dead Prophet. Just yeah. owning left, right and center. I mean, he's still a favorite pick. The Axe gets picked up by 2k overlords. Some, a hero that I see only a lot in Indian Dota. Not much outside. Not that much. Um, I, I think Axe has started to gain prominence ever since the uh, change to the counter helix where it now does pure damage. One of the Indian okay. teams that actually loves running the Axe is Beyond Infinity. We've seen them actually give Rave a run for them. In fact, they took a game off Rave running No Chances Axe. So clearly that is a potent pickup. And a, four, a fourth position Axe or a fifth position Axe? Uh, a sort of greedy fourth. So they, they okay. basically give him farm priority and then they run a solo support. So I, okay. I'm kind of expecting something like that to happen here as well. But who knows, it could just be a straight up off lane axe that ditches the lane and goes into the jungle because I and Talon OP, right? Yeah. So, just looking at it now, uh, Feral Rage have got the two supports. Unless it's more of a core Kunga, which could be a surprise, you never know. I mean, nothing is constant in Indian Dota other than bad internet, so we'll have to wait and watch what role that Kunga takes up. The 2k overlords have picked up Terrorblade 
help sieging high ground like anything if he chooses to go dragon lance into manta and all of that and speaking of terrible there was a really interesting game newbie and wings where uh wings came back after like a 10k gold deficit with shadow demon and luna it completely ripped apart terrible so i don't know if elder rage will choose to go that route if they've been following the international scene so we'll have to wait and watch So the way I see it right now, 2K Overlords has this pseudo push lineup coming out with the Terrorblade augment, his illusion army augmented by the Vengeful Spirit Sora, and you've also got the Four Spirits that uh, basically more units on the ground. You've got the pseudo Zoo Strat coming out that you can use to battle down towers. Feral Rage, they do have tools to deal with the push. I mean, Bristleback's a great frontliner while you've got the Kunkka Ghost Ship and of course the Ice Blast from the Ancient Apparition. In theory, mm-hmm. it sounds great, but if 2K Overlords can just get one good swap initiation or one good blink and call. Terror Rage's mm-hmm. defense just crumbles while the Terror Blade takes down towers. Yeah. Anti-mate. Terror Rage taking the time. No. Nah. I mean, I'm left scratching my head at this man. I I I can't I really can't agree with this anti-mage pickup. Okay, I I get that you know you want to try and split push while they're barreling down your towers, but they need something to stop this push. I don't think the Kunkka and the Ancient Apparition are enough by any stretch of the imagination at the moment. Earthshaker would be a good pick, but uh, I don't know where they're going to run him. I mean, considering the lanes don't make sense then. No, they could definitely run an Earthshaker. I mean, a mid Kunkka, a support Earthshaker, and an off lane Bristleback. That could work. Yeah. But I mean, it, it's risky, right? Because when you run an Earthshaker, you're looking to turn the Terrorblade's illusion army up against him. But any smart terrible yeah, is just going to spread out his units and then siege the tower. You're almost never going to get the jump on him, especially if that Earthshaker gets shut down early and can't find about a 15 to 20 minute blink dagger. But okay. uh, I like the Lion Band coming out from 2K Overlords. The Hex and the Mana Drain great at dealing with illusions as well. Mhm. And I presume uh that 2K Overlords have read the Kunkka as more of a core Kunkka rather than a support and spanning out a support. And Feral Rage, meanwhile, ban out Beastmaster. Solid lockdown on the anti mage. You do not want to play against that. The Earthshaker gets picked up, Nishant. Yeah, well, this is risky. This is very risky from Feral Rage because now, I mean, yeah, it's great versus the Terrible Dev can get you. Bla- oh, we're gonna see a Chen coming out. This is, I'm gonna say a first in Indian Dota, at least in the last two patches. I don't think we've seen a single Chen pick up in the entire Star Cup so far. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen a Chen in a long time in any European Dota or Indian Dota. Don't get picked up that much. I haven't seen him that much in the Manila Major, so it, it's going to be interesting to see what role this Chen plays. Uh, I mean, people are favoring the Enchantress over the Chen nowadays. That's what the path seems to lean towards. Yeah, I can't for the life of me figure out why Chen has fallen off, man. I mean, I get that. Okay, you know, you want a hero that can last through the mid game phase because the meta now rewards mid game fights, mm-hmm. but. Chen Chen is one of those heroes that can just dominate the early game and take you basically if you take down those early towers you've got such a massive goal lead going into the mid game phase if you manage to pull out an agonim scepter high ground siege just become absolutely easy so i'm mm-hmm. kind of surprised that we're not seeing more chen pickups coming out i guess it's a leftover from the whole uh, bounty hunter ricky roaming meta where if you put a chen in the jungle you're just going to have a bounty sapping your exp and slapping you in the back every time you're not looking okay but i mean yeah so you draft chen if you're going to push a lot of teams do not favor pushing strats anymore like you said the game is more mid game oriented and in the mid game chen doesn't offer much unless of course he gets an early ags and his team rallies around him and they start sieging high ground and stuff like that with the mech but uh, it'll be interesting to see what this chen does uh, whatever uh, little chen have seen they like to play offensive they like to gank in the early game but they tend to fall off in the mid game so we'll have to see how this chen keeps himself relevant in the entire game uh there's a guy called standard punk playing chen is it is this the very same punk crits of quit no, card game no 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 this is in the indian dota 2 legend man this this is oh. a new punk okay cool but one one problem that i foresee here for 2k overlords now they are running an off lane ax which means that if feral rage commits to shutting down that ax He can't really jump into the jungle. If he does, the farming efficiency is going to be reduced quite heavily when, with the Chen farming one side of the jungle and the Axe farming the other. And we already right. pointed out the uh, roaming potential on a hero like the Earthshaker who's uh, basically one of those few heroes that doesn't need too many levels in the early game phase because the Fisher mm-hmm. is as effective for the first few levels as it is at max. So mm-hmm. he's probably going to be running behind that Chen or the Axe in the jungle, slowing them down as much as he can. So yeah, I think the game plan here for feral rage is shut down that axe as best as you can in in the off lane make him go into the jungle and then send your earthshaker to follow him around as well 
Speaking of lanes, right now it looks like Axe is posturing to take the safe lane. So, something that we haven't seen in a really, really long time is an offensive try lane with a Chen in it. I don't know. Right now, Axe seems to be moving to the safe lane or maybe just going there for the rune or what, I don't know. Anyways, if it is an offensive try lane of Chen, Terrorblade and Vengeful Spirit, I don't know how much it's going to work. But I they mean... Yeah, I, I can agree with it because again, Anti Mage is one of those heroes that adds no value whatsoever in the laning phase. You need to babysit him and make sure that he's just farming till he can Correct. come back out and carry you after the 30 minute mark. And recognizing this, you know, if you put a Chen in the enemy jungle, there's not too many ways that they can punish that Chen there. I mean, yeah. they've got the Earth Shaker and the Ancient Apparition, but that's really not enough to score a kill. You want something like a Gyrocopter that can go in and do burst damage when he comes in from the flanks. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it does seem to be a safe lane axe for now. I don't know. And uh, Chen is going to have a decent time in the top lane. In fact, he's going to be very successful, I would rather say. Uh, with Ventral Spirit, Ancient Apparition is an easy VC kill. Terrorblade can bully Anti-Mage out of the lane. So it looks like this top lane should be a success if they get the tower nice and early into the game, get some aggressive watch down. Anti-Mage is really shut down. He has He'll run out of space to farm. That is, if they get like a six seven minute tower or five minute tower yeah and i mean it's not like feral rage's late game completely outshines 2k overlords either i mean terrible is just scary regardless of what phase of the game you're looking at and well you've also got the invoker who's an absolute beast if he gets momentum in the early phases speaking of invoker he's chosen to go exot he's got some global setup potential with the vengeful spirit and the chen not a problem Although Quaswex, I, I would I would much rather prefer Quaswex in this game, but I think Exot is fine as well. I actually think the Exot is the better way to go here. And just adding those four spirits to your push with the Chen creeps yeah. and the Terrible Illusions. Just more for Feral Rage to focus on. And honestly, they have no wave clear right now. They have absolutely nothing to clear creep waves in a jiffy. They're gonna rely on torrents and tidebringers, but when when the when the Kunkka comes in to get a tidebringer hit off, he's just gonna get swapped in and blown up. I. I mean, that's another thing about the Kunkka. Uh, what's, what skill build do you uh, estimate away? Do you think he's going to max out X nice and early, get that little range? Yeah, I think that, well, maybe not max it out. He's probably going to go like three levels in it. Yeah, that, I believe that's, that's about enough range to connect your ghost ship, at least for the solo kills. Mm -hmm. But uh, given that he is in a middle lane capacity, you usually want to max out that Tidebringer to bully out your opponent laner. But this is all contingent on whether or not he's going to receive rotations and considering that Chen has just moved into the enemy jungle and said this is my home now I don't see any rotations coming mid to support this Kunkka he's probably going to have to max out that X and just make plays of his own hmm. so bottom lane yes. is uh, an Axe versus Bristleback matchup this I'm kind of surprised that Axe hasn't already picked up the magic stick he's moved in but no he's ditching it this is this this is a mistake if he's not going to get the early magic stick versus a bristleback of all heroes. Yeah, absolute value magic stick here, and I, you're right. He should get it, but I think he's prioritizing his boots first. I don't know. Yeah, but he does have seven tangos to work with, so I guess that could work out for him. Also, I feel like magic stick is just going to help all across the board here, even at the top lane, considering that there's just that many more heroes and that many more spells being dropped down in a try versus try situation. You want to get early magic six on both sides, or at least on both cores, if nothing else. The only person who's picked up a magic stick nice and early is the Ancient Apparition, smart fellow. Uh, Earthshaker hasn't got one yet, he has the gold, however. Punk, meanwhile, is going one-on-one -on -one <laughs> with the Ancient Apparition in the top lane. He's quite a fearless Chen, I'd say. Yeah, he's even picked up that Wild Wing Ripper that's throwing down a tornado towards that anti-mage. So this is a lot of commitment to shutting down the anti-mage in the early phases of the game. So I, I think, if if anything, this is going to be one of those old, well, the new meta Vanguard anti-mages coming out as opposed to the Battle Fury Rush. Mm -hmm. I, I think Vanguard makes perfect sense, but uh, it'd be interesting to see whether he chooses to fight with that Vanguard or go farm further. Anyways, there is action breaking out. Casual yeah, Sunstrike, those creeps. Helping slow down Dragon Rage. Ancient Apparition, one of the most squishy candidates in the Dota universe. At least at level 1. But uh, he'll survive for now and I don't I don't think they're going to... There's no way they're going to dive this. They're trying with a cheeky play on this tornado, but it's just too slow. 
Yes, I do believe first blood will be taking place at the top lane. Uh, we, we've got, I, I, I mean, it's just statistically more obvious, right? You've got more heroes, more spells, more damage, and hopefully more kills as well. Yeah. The top three on the CS boards right now, you've got uh, all three Radiant heroes, the Terrorblade leading the charts, this offensive tri lane doing all sorts of work for 2k overlords. That anti-mage, he's got just six CS, Fisher gonna come through, but really they can't make a play here. If they do try and go in, okay, that's a Hadouken coming out, Metamorphosis following up, Sunstrike coming through, will connect, that's first blood. Trinity puts himself on the board. That Hadouken though really just, I think it connected on all three heroes, yeah. and again, Grizzle. Almost going down there. If that magic missile connected, he was a dead one for sure. <coughs> Meanwhile, on the bot lane, Axe completely bullying Bristle back out of the lane without that magic stick. He completely ignores your 4k wisdom, Nishant, and this is why the 2k overlord is just lording over that Bristle back down. Well, day one at top. Getting brought down anyway. They've got uh, the Chen army with the illusion army as well. First fortification, three minutes in. And uh, really not much that Feral Rage can do to stop this. And it, it, it's it's at perfect timing as well. You've got the siege creep. Okay, that siege creep just walked in YOLO and started getting a few hits on the tower. So no more siege available for this push. <laughs> Middle lane, Trinity getting run down by Dada. He doesn't have another X mark though. But uh, there is a salve available for the invoker, so he should be all right. He threw out a sun strike somewhere. Not sure who he tried for. Looks like it was the bristleback. He's gonna have yeah, to make the long. Yeah, it was the bristleback. It did connect. Yeah, so he's gonna have to make that long walk of shame back to base now while Wiz is gonna bring himself closer to that blink dagger with the free farm on this lane. In fact, he might just be able to bring down this tier 1 tower quickly as well. Mm -hmm. So Chen's doing really well so far. 4 minutes, level 3, about 7 CS and he's even got an assist. He's got that purge creep and he started with 2 smokes. So now he's looking to make a play on mid. Kunka, one of the more uh, susceptible heroes to ganks here. And he's even gonna get backstabbed. There's no dire observer ward watching this Chen's movements though. There's one at the river, but... Okay, looks like Chen is gonna bail on the mid and go for towards top. He can definitely score a solo kill here on Sniper. Or rather the Earthshaker. But he wants to go for the Courier instead. Nope, they're gonna prioritize the Earthshaker. Nothing he can do to get out of this. The stun to follow it up. Good rotation coming out from Element of Free. And... Uh Chen being an unusual pick, he's also gone a slightly unusual skill build, leveling up Penitence nice and early. Not something you see too often. Not something I've seen for a while, for sure. Yeah, I believe Penitence got a bit of a buff. I can't for the life of me figure out what it was, but it did get buffed recently, which is probably what's forcing him to go for it. Oh, Krizzle, what have you done? Gonna get ensnared and beaten up. He doesn't have any consumables as well, so he's probably gonna have to go to base once again. And uh, that tier 1 at top, now going down to the hands of always wanna lose. The second metamorphosis is finding another objective, Dragon Rage getting slowed down by the purge. They're gonna get this kill quite comfortably, the ensnares coming online, don't even need it actually. As Venge just punches him in the back. They're making this look so easy right now, the Chen, he's just walking all over the enemy jungle. They should really consider putting down a ward inside their own jungle here. Absolutely. I mean, uh, they're making this Chen seem scarier than he is. If if they just come in one gang to the Chen, they can completely shut him down, push him out of the lane. He's still only level 3. It is oh. quite doable. Meanwhile, at mid, in the mid though, lane, Trinity, he's gonna lose his life. And finally, we'll see Feral Rage putting themselves on the board as uh, Earthshaker finally makes a good rotation. There's the power of that Earthshaker we spoke about. Doesn't need, really need too much as long as he can just block out the uh, movement path on the hero that you're trying to gank. You'll get a kill almost certainly. But bottom lane, Wiz, I think he's about to lose his life. That magic stick unavailable for him. He's gonna get run down with the quill spray stacks. It's physical damage, so if he gets that call off, he might have enough armor to tank through one more. Who's it gonna be? It's gonna be the dunk. And it gets the kill on the bristle back first. But once again, Earthshaker comes in and cleans up his allies' mess. Good rotation from the Earthshaker, but as of now, FR are not addressing the top lane issue. anti mage has been shut down heavily. He's sitting only at 15 CS. While Terrorblade is at a very comfortable 38, he's having a good time and FR need to address the top lane. It looks like the tower is gone, they, uh, the tower is gone, sorry, and they might be under the illusion that 2k overlords might just back up. Meanwhile, on the mid lane, Nishan. Yeah, we've got uh, another throwing down that uh, 
ghost ship to get away. No real kills just yet, but Dragon Rage. Not sure what prompted him to run out like that. Penitence with the Sun Strike and the End Snare. Perfect execution. They deserve this kill if they can get it. One more hit might do the trick, but they're out of range. They're going to focus on Dada instead. One stun. The second one doesn't follow it up. And the Centaur. I believe the stun was on cooldown there, which is why he couldn't get it off in time. No casualties in the jungle. As Punk and Element of Free will make their way out. Surprisingly though, Wiz is going for the Vanguard this game as opposed to an early blink, blink tagger. Yeah, this is... It, it's questionable. I mean, I feel like the blink would have been one of their best initiation tools. But I guess given that he's just free farming at the moment, he's gonna have a blink in good time over and above the Vanguard. As for the Terror Blade, Treads online for him. I believe he'll be going for the Dragon Lance as his first item of choice. Standard stuff so far, as far as item builds go. Yeah, everyone's just going for their tried and tested builds, except for the Axe, I'd say. Mech coming out for the Chen. Uh, on the other side, Ancient Apparition. I don't think he has any opportunity to go for the Midas just yet. Always want to lose. Is he going to lose his life? Nope. They're out of range. I believe they didn't have vision up the cliff there. And fun fact, it's only a level 1 X mark per spot. So he has limited range to deal with at the moment. Okay, that is... I mean, that would... You'd expect a lot more rotations coming out from the Earthshaker if you're going to go for the maxed out Torrent build. But uh, so far, it's just been the one movement towards mid. As we are going to see another pause coming out. Dragon Rage... He's got to be careful here because the Terrorblade does have a point in the Reflection. He can slow him down and blow him up with the Metamorphosis and then a Sun Strike to come on top of it. He is a level 3 Ancient Apparition and is very susceptible to be being brought down like this. There's nothing that Krizzle can do to really help him either. Yeah, Dragon Rage is just sitting at 500 HP. I just did the math. I mean, 4-5 hit be even less. But uh, Terrorblade backs off for now. And Krizzle's Eight minutes into the game, sitting with the Ring of Health and 700 gold. He's trying to catch up and he has to do some real catch up if FR need to have any chance in this game. Yeah, this is one of those games where I feel like 2k Overlord is just going to explode every time they get their new items. So as we already see, the Vanguard Axe just runs into the Bristleback and gets the call. No Blink Tagger needed. He'll follow it up with a stun. The Dunk is there. The Sun Strike's coming through unnecessary as the Axe is a basketball player. He'll get this tower quite comfortably as well. So tier 1 and bot going to be secured, the others coming in from the side, the ghost ship first, what? That's completely whiffed, catching absolutely no one and now the other might pay for that with his life. They've got the centaur stun to chain it up but they're not microing this right. Now the going to dodge the call as well, this is a ninja kunkka as he's going to get away from all of this. But uh, that's the power of that vanguard on the axe, he can just run out in their faces. And try and make something happen. Dada stunned up, but they will get the torrent stun off. Wiz is under the tower, and this time, I think he's going to pay for his transgressions. One more quill spray ought to do the trick. They tried to send him back with the test of fate, but they were unsuccessful. Now the chase is on. Federal Rage looking for more. On the retreat, they're going to look for Punk. The stun comes out, but Dada getting sandwiched in here with the center and the Venge pummeling away at him. The Chen going to lose his life to the Fisher as the Venge gets blocked in and brought down as well. 3 0 in favor of Federal Rage there. As it looks like a bit of a throw from the 2k overlords. The score now sends it 5 for 5. A definite overextension. They were uh, really out of fuel in that fight. They didn't have much to work with. They used everything they could, but uh, too much, too deep. Hey, anyway. space created, man. Trinity gets the tier 1 at mid on the back of that. And top lane, you've got some pressure on the tier 2. Terrorblade already has his Dragon Lance flying out to him in the courier. Wiz? Okay then, he just did that. Casual solo kill on the anti -mage. He walks up to these guys, calls them in the middle of an entire creep wave and then dunks them to death. <laughs> Why is Federal Rage allowing this to happen? Yeah, it, it's, it, was, it, it is definitely unusual to have an Axe just walk up to you and kill you like that. This is not something... I mean, you pick the anti-mage for mobility. And yeah. if the axe doesn't build something to deal with that, you should ideally never be caught. Anyway, I guess they'll learn from their mistakes. That's what playing tournaments is all about. But uh, 2k overlords are on a bit of a clock here, I'd say, with that Chen pickup. They need that mech to be coming out and they need to start bringing down some more towers. If 
Federal Rage does manage to find a little bit of wiggle room in this game. And by that, by that I mean if they manage to get a blink dagger on the Earthshaker, they're going to have the tools needed to try and mount a successful defense. And I don't think 2k Overlords can afford to give them that window of opportunity. And look at this. They're just going to go straight for Roshan. Not a care in the world. Come at us, bros. If you want to fight, we'll fight you in the pit. Rosh on the verge of melting. That's three points in the wave of terror as well. So armor reduction is a tool at their disposal. Oh, ship in a perfect spot with the torrent as well. But it's just not doing nearly enough. Now they're getting stunned up. And here we go. The stun. The fight starts with the 2k Overlords throwing down the magic missile. Wiz walks in again. About to get the call. But he gets the echo slam in his face instead. Sniper going to get brought down. Terror blades damage. Too much to deal with. Anti-mage blows up the Venge. But that's all they've really gotten. The call holding the Kunkka in position. Dunk number one gets the kill on him as well. Making it a 2-0. The sun strike is there. The bristle gets clipped. And he's forced to run away. Well, once again, the 2k Overlords will move into the pit to finish what they started. It was a play they had to come into. It was like an all-or-nothing go for Russia and hopefully win a fight. But when you when you are so far behind, it's a bit hard to win such team fights. Do you think they'd be better off if they didn't take that fight? I think no. I think they should have taken the fight, but maybe not straight up committed to it. Maybe just drop a fissure, a ghost ship, and a torrent, and then keep spamming out torrents and whatnot. And Ideally, it should have been the Bristleback running in there, as opposed to a Kunkka after he threw down okay. his ghost ship. Yeah. Also, uh, Ancient Apparition, maybe just turn level 6? I didn't see the Ancient Apparition ulti in the middle of all that. Yeah, he didn't have yeah. the Ice Blast for that one. Yeah. But yeah, that, that would have been a very crucial factor. Ice Blast because inside the Rush Pit is always a very dangerous tool. And the Earthshaker did get off a decent Echo Slam, it did a decent chunk of damage to both the Axe and the Ventral Spirit and maybe if they had an Ice Flush on top of that, it could have been maybe a double kill. Yeah, it... I mean there was a possibility, there was no sun. there's no Sunder on the Terrorblade, okay he's killed it up now, he's actually used it as well. But yeah, he's got an Aegis, a Dragonlance, 14 minutes in, they've got uh, a ridiculous 7,500 net worth lead. There's nothing stopping them from battling down these towers. This is one of those games where I feel like that arcane boots on the Earthshaker is a bad item choice. And again, they're going to whiff with the ghost ship. So Punk will survive. He's still got the heal from the hand of God. His mech should be flying out as well. Nice blast. Comes through on the back of a torrent. But no one's going to die just yet. The bristleback might be going down. The sun strike is there. But the swap comes through with the dunk. Wiz will score another kill. And he does even have that blink dagger for initiation the next time around. 14 minutes, man. Can they really take racks this early on in the game? I, I wouldn't doubt them. I mean, right now the game looks like a real long shot for FR. Yeah, Konka uh, not getting brought down by the Earth Shakers down. No Echo Slam available. He had one second to go till it came off cooldown, and that was really the best tool. They're even gonna force him to buy back. Torrent. That's a good one. The Ice Blast is there as well. This could be a turnaround, possibly. No, they whiffed on the Ice Blast. An Earthshaker looking for some kills on the retreat. Will not find anyone. There's no metamorphosis though for this Terrorblade, so I don't think they might want to commit to this. Go ship. Got a miss. And catch only on the axe. The other. Yeah, he's going to be brought down here. Yeah, they've got the Sun Strike on top of the call. The dunk was whiffed, but it doesn't matter. Invoker gets the kill. Now it's going to be the Bristleback slowed down. The Ford Spirit's whittling away his armor. Terrorblade scores that kill. It's just a complete bloodbath outside the middle lane. Krizzel comes in to try and do something. He gets taken down, but it's a good Echo Slam. Can they make something off of this? Everyone on the side of the Radiant is low, but it's not nearly enough to finish the job. And it's essentially going to be a straight-up five-man team wipe. The Dragon Rage trying to make a run for it. He's not getting too far. He gets one kill on the Venge on the Retreat, but he's going to pay for that with his life by the looks of it. No, he'll survive. Oh, no, he won't. The Sun Strike. Essentially seals the deal, but look at this now. <laughs> Everyone's low, so they can't finish the job on the tower, but that's a lot of money changing hands in favor of 2k Overlord. They'll come back to finish the job with fresh toys in their bank. Speaking of money changing hands, if you take a look at the Coldcraft, there's a 12,000 plus lead going in favor of 2k Overlords. This and, uh, is domination, man. Yeah, very one sided game. It is a long, long, long shot for FR to win this game. Sniper with Dragonlance kind of long. 
and uh, I, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Anti Mage is still struggling for his Battle Fury. Nowhere close to it. This is, years. This, this is one of those games where, you know, the Earthshaker should have just ditched those arcane boots, rushed his blink dagger, ignored his teammates' calls for help, <laughs> and just kept farming till he got the dagger. And once he got the dagger, unload one massive echo slam on those illusions and then try and take a fight. And now they're just clueless, they have nothing to fight with. Yeah, I mean, I, I completely agree with you. The Earthshaker should have gone rushed as Blink. But if anything, he's the one who's doing most damage in teamfights, even without a Blink. The Kunkka is just throwing his boats here and there. Uh, absolutely careless. The Dragon Rage is hardly getting his Ice Blast off. So, uh, and with that X mark, it should be a oh. simple setup. This should be a kill. But Tidebringer gets the kill on the back there. That uh, They actually committed the Ghost Ship as well as the Ice Blast for that Dava. He's gonna get that X torrent off anyway, despite getting stunned. They're gonna get two kills here. Double kill for the Kunkka. Not bad, not bad. Federal Rage. Stemming the bleeding for now, getting themselves some more time to work with. And a decent amount of money as well. 1900 gold on the back of those two kills. She's choosing to build into a Shadow Blade. Not, not the best of items. Doesn't add much, much value in a fight, but nonetheless. Yeah, I, I can agree with this. He's gonna have to go for that one punch man build. Maybe an armlet would have been better. But they really need something explosive, something very impactful in these next few team fights. And in the absence of the Echo Slam, who knows, a Shadow Blade hit with the Tidebringer might be all that he could ask for. Punk. He's got his mech online on that Chen. I believe he's picked up something else as well. No, he's just spent all of his money on the mechanism for now. Well, uh, there's a Manta style getting completed for the Terror Blade. He's just about 400 gold away. Invoker. He's opted to go for the Blink Tiger, so the pickoff potential with the double Blink and Avenge Swap is definitely a threat for Feral Rage here. But now they're gonna have to deal with this Tier 2 Tower, and considering they've expended the Metamorphosis, I see nothing stopping them from going all the way to the high ground after this. Well, the calm before the storm indeed, Feral Rage. Let's see if they can actually make something happen. Look at this. Oh, he missed the Tidebringer hit. Not like this. He turned around and whacked in the, in the direction of his own base. Yeah, that would have definitely assured some wave clear and hopefully held the push, but... Uh, that call I mean, though. A two-man call with a meatball coming on top of it. Dada gonna survive? No, he's not. He's gonna get swapped and stunned as the Terror Blade will chunk him to bits. And there's that pick off. We spoke about this right at the start of the game, in fact, where if the uh, Kunkka comes in to try and clear up the waves, he's just gonna get swapped and taken down. Again, the call from the Axe catches out too, but this time there's no follow up. Echo Slam onto two, but it's not on the Terror Blade and his Illusion Army. And they've just exhausted everything in their arsenal and haven't managed to find a single kill. They're getting zoned out by the Invoker while the Terror Blade finishes the job on the Rax. And honestly, I'm not sure if there's anything Federal Rage can do about this. Feral <coughs> Rage. Do they have any more firepower left here? And he just left clutching at straws, dropping fissure after fissure. 20 minutes in. This is turning into quite a stomp. I thought I heard an X mark somewhere. Kunkka. He's up to no good. I think he yeah, died for he, an illusion there. It was an illusion. Well. Saving Grace here though, Krizzle has his Battle Fury online. Well, at what cost man, he's got a massive hole in his base. <laughs> and it looks like 2k lords are not done, they want to keep the push going, they're moving in the direction of the bot lane. They're not giving them any time to regroup. And I, I think uh, even at this stage, if FR do manage to get their AoEs off, with some synchronization, they can hold a push. I'm not saying they can win the game, they can definitely hold a push for sure. Yeah, but I wouldn't say it's impossible either, but they're just firing out their spells without actual synergy here. Like we just saw an Ice Plus going down at bottom. It's gonna be on cooldown by the time they reach high ground, and how do they fight this? Earth Shaker, man, sell those freaking arcane boots and just get the dagger, but I mean, he doesn't even have the Echo Slam anymore. Yeah, he's 50 seconds away from it. The uh, ice Blast is another 18 seconds on cooldown. 
So we'll have to wait and watch what is FR are going to do. They'll have to hope for some crazy boat initiation from the Kunkka. But I doubt that's going to happen. Yep. This is, it's really just textbook Dota for uh, 2k overlords now. They just got to spam out those illusions, pop a metamorphosis and send them up on the high ground. They'll get this tower very easily and eventually force their opponents into submission. But the more time they waste, uh, the sooner that sniper's going to get his uh, echo slam online. Oh, look at that illusion army. Nice plus is going to skim straight over it. Earthshaker, he's licking his lips and moving forward, but the axe says no, sir. Not today. Tier 3 is down. It's just melted in their faces. Dada thinking about throwing down the torrent and the ghost ship. It's going to connect on just an illusion. They whiffed that one pretty badly. Dragon Raid stunned behind a beautiful call from Wiz with a dunk to follow it up. Dunk number 2. Double kill comes through as Sniper. He does drop down that Echo Slam but it's only a last Hail Mary drop and he's not going to get anything off of it. Bristleback, the only survivor, will not survive for much longer as Dumchio Kabap, if that's what his name is, <laughs> is now dead. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was only a matter of time before the double G's came out there, Vivek. Yeah, an absolutely one-sided game. Hats off to 2k overlords. They played really well. They pretty much won all the lanes. An offensive Chen, an offensive try lane with a Chen, not something you see every day. So, Indian Dota is always a pleasure, always a surprise. I love today's game. And hopefully we get to see more such games in the future. Well, folks, hope you guys have had a...